Class ten, as you know, that we have started with this chapter, the necklace. In this chapter, we have read about Matilda, who had a bad fortune. She was married to a clerk, but she thought that she deserved really more. Okay, so one day, what happened that her husband, who was a clerk in the education department, he has come up with an invitation. Okay, to join the ball party, ballroom dance, in which all the elite guests or great officials they are going to be invited. and ultimately she was feeling helpless to go there she was really feeling sad to go there what is the reason because she thought that she did not have had she did not have any beautiful dress and when she had got her dress she was still uh, in you can say she was still not ready to attend that party why because she thought that to adorn her dress she did not have any beautiful jewels or admiring jewelry so for that what she thought she thought of a friend okay so we have read it till you can say page number we are on page number 40 so now here i am going to read please pick it up thank you hmm so it is being displayed here okay so 41 page i am reading she was not convinced okay when she said that she is does she does not have any beautiful jewels to wear she was not convinced no she replied there is nothing more humiliating than to have a shabby air in the midst of rich women so when her husband he suggested her that you can wear some fresh flowers and that will also appeal that will also suit you she was not ready at all to wear these you can say uh, fresh flowers why because she thought that among all these rich ladies who were and who were adorning themselves with beautiful jewels she would look quite shabby and odd by wearing those flowers okay now then her husband cried out how stupid we are go and find your friend ma'am froster and ask her to lend you her jewels now he said how stupid we are that the solution is in front of us only why because he said that that your friend ma'am froster who is very rich you can go to see her and you can borrow some jewels from her she uttered a cry of joy it is true i had not thought of that she then ultimately she was very happy she said oh yes i can go her go to her and ultimately i can get some jewels from her why this idea did not come to me earlier now the next day she took herself to her friend's house and related her story of distress so next day after completing her work she immediately went back to her friend's house ma'am froster okay then she narrated her complete story that this and this is going to happen we are going on a party and i don't have some beautiful jewels to wear will you lend me some jewels ma'am froster went to her closet took out a large jewel case brought it opened it and said choose my dear now what he did now her friend who was also very good one okay so she went inside her room she opened the closet that means that cupboard and inside from that cupboard she has brought out a big jewel case and this jewel case contained number of necklaces earrings and so many things to wear and she said my dear you can choose your own one choose any one you like she saw at first some bracelets then a collar of pearls then a venetian cross of gold and jewels of admirable workmanship so she looked through all the pieces of jewelry they were really very beautiful some were you can say collars of pearl to be worn around neck some bracelets then cross okay venetian cross okay ultimately she could be a then just a moment please and then she thought of you can say some beautiful jewels which were really appreciable which have great work of art then she tried the, the she tried the jewels before the glass hesitated but could not neither decide to take them or leave them so she was trying in front of a glass in front of mirror so she was admiring herself but she was not able to think that and she was not able to decide that which piece of jewelry she should take because all were suiting her then she asked have you nothing more then she said do you have anything more why yes look for yourself i don't know what all will please you she said yes you can see yourself 
because i don't know that what you will like you just have any piece of jewelry you like suddenly she discovered in a black satin box a superb necklace of diamonds then she noticed that in the black box uh, you can say captain uh, you can say very soft cloth that is satin was a perfect piece of necklace made up of diamonds her hands trembled as she took it out so her hands means they trembled because she thought it is very costly and she could not wear it she placed it about her throat against her dress and was ecstatic so she in front of glass she thought and she had red dress she uh, you can say just put it in front of you can say that dress and uh, uh, over her neck and ultimately she thought this is perfectly fit this is perfectly going with this dress ecstatic then she asked in a hesitating voice full of anxiety could you lend me this only this why yes certainly so then she hesitatingly hesitatingly she was asking her you can say friend could you please lend me this she said yes yes why not you can definitely take it so she fell upon the neck of her friend embraced her with passion and then went away with her treasure so she was so happy that she embraced her friend in this manner oh dear thank you so i'm so thankful to you and then what happened that she went back with her treasure which treasure that necklace now the day of the hall arrived ma'am loisel was a great success she was the prettiest of all elegant gracious smiling and full of joy all the men noticed her asked her name and wanted to be presented yes so at ball dance at the party she was of course a great success everyone noticed every man noticed okay because she was beautiful she was smiling she was full of joy full of energy and of course her dress it was going perfect with that necklace she danced with enthusiasm why because she has never attended these kind of parties and it is for the first time that she has attended that party and she wanted to enjoy it to the fullest so she was full with enthusiasm intoxicated with pleasure okay intoxicated with pleasure means completely filled with happiness forgetting everything forgetting her actual condition also and thinking of nothing but all this admiration this victory so complete and sweet to her heart so she was just having you can say this kind of admiration that her victory is complete that she is finally she has won and what she thought that has happened and she it was sweet to her heart she went home towards 4 o'clock in the morning now next in the 4 o'clock in the morning she went home her husband had been half asleep in one of little saloons since midnight with three other gentlemen whose wives were enjoying themselves very much so finally it was the party went on throughout the night her husband was busy in saloon me some open space at joining the hall okay so he was there okay he was enjoying with other three other gentlemen and their wives were of course enjoying themselves he threw around her shoulders the modest wraps they had carried where whose poverty clashed with the elegance of the ball costume so he thought that now it is turning cold so he has put around the you can say uh, that uh, uh, a modest modest mean not of that appreciable quality okay modest sort of wrap and she thought that in among those rich ladies among those you can say great ladies it should not be appropriate for her to wear these these wraps because this is ultimately it is diminishing the beauty of her dress elegance of her dress she wished to hurry away in order not to be noticed by the other women who were wrapping themselves in rich furs so at that moment she thought now it's time immediately to go away from this place because the other women who were wrapping themselves in beautiful rich furs means beautiful furs they were wearing around their shoulders she should not be noticed because she did not have anything beautiful to wear around her shoulders loisel detained her wait i'm going to call a cab he said wait wait stay here i'm going to call a cab but but she would not listen and descended the steps rapidly but she was not listening she was moving in hurry why because she thought that nobody should not notice her nobody should come to know that she has come 
Now, when they were in the street, they find no carriage and they began to seek for one. Hailing the coachman who they saw at a distance. Hailing means calling. So when they went into the street, there was no cat, there was no cap, and ultimately they saw carriage. So calling from them, please stop there. Okay, they called it in order to hire it. They walked along toward the river, hopeless and shivering. Now, towards the riverside, they were hopeless and they were shivering, they were moving. Finally, they found one of those old carriages that the one in Paris after nightfall. Okay, so finally, when they did not find anything, then what was there? They finally found the carriage. Okay, this usually operate at nighttime in Paris. So it means that the setting is of that of Paris. It took them as far as their door and they went wearily up to their apartment. Wearily means tired. Okay. So some time it took them. Finally, they reached at the door of their apartment and went inside tired. It was all over for her. And on his part, he remembered that he would have to be at the office by 10 o'clock. So even her husband, he was also in hurry to take rest. Why? Because he thought that now it is time for me to take rest as he has to present himself at 10 o'clock in the morning in his office. Okay, so see how busy the life is, okay, that uh, among these you can say responsibilities, they have to enjoy also, but they are not putting in their exact efforts to enjoy also. Because for her, what she thought is that happiness comes with money. Okay, so material, she was a bit materialistic in nature. Now she removed the wraps from her shoulders before the glass for a final view of herself in her glory. Suddenly she uttered a cry. Her necklace was not around her neck. So for the final uh, time, she was looking in front of glass. She was just looking at her, you can say, that beautiful dress she was wearing. And she tried to, you can say, gave a final look to her. But finally then she noticed, oh my God, where is my necklace? It was not around her. And that too was a borrowed one. Of course, it's a problem for her. Loisel already half undressed asked, what is the matter? Now, Mr. Loisel, he noticed that she cried. What happened to her? She, uh, he asked. She turned towards him excitedly. I have, I have, I no longer have Mam Frost's necklace. In, in, you can say this kind of, you can say, uh, uh, you can say chunks of words. She said, my necklace, Mam Frost's necklace is missing. I have lost it. No, she has borrowed. How great problem it is. Okay. So, he arose in dismay. Again, he was also in sadness. What? How is that? It is not possible. How that happened? How could we? No, nothing in front of them. And they looked in the fields, in the folds of the dress, in the folds of the cloak, and pockets everywhere. They could not find it. Cloak means the long coat he was wearing. They were looking in everything, folds. Uh, you can say... And then you can shedding this dress in this manner to find whether they are in the folds. They have folded it down now. They have opened the folds and to see where is the necklace. They did not find it. He asked, you are sure you still had it when we left minister's house? He said, are you sure here that you had it when we left minister's house? Yes, yes. I felt it as we came out. He, she said, yes, I felt it. I touched with my hand when I came out of the party. But if you had lost it in the street, we should have heard it fall. It must be in the cab. Now he said, if it must have been fallen in the street, the noise we can hear that it has fallen down. Maybe that it happened that it has fallen in the cab. Yes, it is possible. Did you take the number? He said, uh, now, did you take the number? Let, let us call. No. And you, did you notice what it was? No. He said, I've noticed number or the type of cap. No, we haven't. They looked at each other, utterly cast down. Now they looked at each other. Finally, the problem is in front of them. Their happiness no longer existed. Okay, they were too sad. Now what to do? Looking at each other's eyes. Finally, Loisel dressed himself again. He put on his clothes to go out and find where the necklace has fallen down. I'm going over the track where we went on 
foot to see if i can find it he said i'm going out to see where we walked by foot to see by the side of the river whether it has fallen there or not and he went she remained in her evening gown and not having the face not having the force to go to bed she was still in her evening gown and she was still not having that you can say energy to go to bed because her mind was so disturbed that this costly necklace is lost now how she could return it okay towards 7 o'clock her husband returned he had found nothing and at 7 o'clock what happened her husband returned and he had also found nothing he went to the police and to the cab office offices and put an advertisement in the newspapers offering a reward so he thought that it is wise that if i go to those cab offices also and ultimately i will give some advertisement so that some reward can be given for this but it is of no use she waited all day in a state of bewilderment means confusion she waited for it throughout the day in confusion before this frightful disaster loisel returned in the evening his face pale and he had discovered nothing so she was waiting for the entire day whether he will come when he will come i will ask him that what has happened whether you have found the necklace or any news about the necklace but finally what has happened he returned in the evening with no news face turned pale and she was still sad that finally the necklace was lost he said write to your friend that you have broken the clasp of the necklace and that you will have it repaired and that will give us time now he thought he thought that i think that you will write a letter to your friend or send her a message that the main clasp means that the lock of the necklace it has been broken so now you are going to repair it after repairing it you will return it this will give us some time to find the necklace she agreed to that she wrote as he dictated at the end of a week they had lost all hope and loisel older by the years declared we must replace this jewel so finally by the end of week when they did not find anything so finally he thought now finally we have to return that jewel now what to do so in a shop of palais royal they found a they found a chaplet of diamonds chaplet means garland okay it's a neck piece sort of okay net chaplet of diamonds which seemed to them exactly like the one they had lost it was valued at 40000 francs so finally in the market one day though going what they have found they have found the similar type of necklace now they thought it is quite similar and but they have to replace it and how much it cost 40000 francs too much 400 francs was difficult for them for for purchasing dress and this is 40000 francs they could get it for 36000 and on bargain they have to pay 36000 loisel possessed 18000 francs which his father had left him he borrowed the rest he made Rena's promises took money from your sirs means from those loan lenders, and the value raised of lenders whole raise of lenders means he has taken that loan amount, okay, eighteen thousand francs he had, and the rest of money he has taken as loan. Then he went to get the new necklace, depositing on the merchant's counter thirty six thousand francs. Finally, when it was made thirty six thousand. he went to the merchant shop and finally he has put on his table he said yes this is the money now give me that piece of necklace when mam loisel took back the jewels to mam froster the letter said to her in a frigid tone you should have returned them to me sooner for i might have needed them now when he she went back in order to return that necklace mam froster turned bit cold he said you would have returned that piece of necklace to me because even i needed them No, Mam Froster did not open the jewel box as Mam Loisel feared she would. Now, when she returned that necklace, Mam, uh, you can say Mam uh, Loisel, she was afraid that she would open up that box, whether it is the same one. But luckily, what happened? She did not open. Then, what would she think if she should receive the substitution? What would she say? Would she take her for a robber? Now, she thought that if she would come to know that she has replaced the necklace, what she would think? she would think that i am a robber okay now 
Ma'am Loisel now knew the horrible life of necessity. She did her part, however, completely heroically. So, Ma'am Loisel, she was now finding the life to be really very difficult. Okay, because whatever is done is not absolutely rightly done. It was necessary to pay this frightful debt. Now, the thing is that that they have taken a huge amount of debt. Okay, and now they have to pay it. It was really very horrible for them. She would pay it. They sent away the maid. They changed their lodgings. They went rented some rooms in the in an attic. Attic means that is small area. Okay. Maid was sent away. Okay. They changed their living place also accommodation because where there is less rent. And finally, they have shifted to a very small place. She learned this odious work of a kid. She. Learned the odious means hard work of kitchen also. That was seems to be very difficult to her. She washed the dishes. She washed and soiled linen, their clothes, dishcloths, which she hung on the line to dry. She took down the refuse to the street each morning and brought up the water, stopping at each landing to catch her breath. So see her condition. Earlier all the work was done by maid. Now what she is doing? They are cutting on their expenses. Maid was sent. She is washing the clothes, washing the dishes, and finally put them hung to dry on a wire. And in order to fetch water, she was go she was going to that water point, filling that those buckets, and coming up to her house. And every time she is stopping to take her bath because she was not so physically strong. Also, she was very delicate actually. Now. And clothed like a woman of the people, she went to the grocers, butchers, and the fruiters' shop with her basket on her arm, shopping and haggling. Okay, to the last soul of their miserable money. Okay, it's to the last so of so is French coin. Okay, to the last so of the miserable money. Okay, haggling means you can say she is bargaining, disputing. Okay, now finally she is going to grocer, fruiter in order to buy the daily, in order to buy daily things. And ultimately, she is of course you can say bargaining with them for every small amount of coin of French money to save because now money is really very important for her. Husband worked evenings putting the books of some merchants in order, and nights he often did copying at five sous a page. So now husband is also doing his work more. Now he has doing some extra work. Sometimes he is working with merchants, arranging the books in his extra time. Okay, extra work he is doing, and at nights he is doing some copying work. He is getting five sous a page. They were collecting money. Okay, in order to uh, pay that debt, and this and this life lasted for ten years, and this took them almost ten years, and. At the end of ten years, they had restored all. Finally, all the money was collected. Ma'am Loisel seemed old now. No, not charm of now, not charm of her body was maintained. Her beauty was not maintained. She seemed old. She had become a strong, hard woman, crude woman of the poor household. Now she's just like that of you can say poor household woman who has turned out to be crude, rough. Her hair badly dressed, her skirts awry, her hands red. She spoke in a loud tone and washed the floors with large pails of water. See the condition: skirts not beautiful, okay, not properly maintained. Her hands turned red, hard, and she is washing the floors with great, you can say, buckets of water. But sometimes, when her husband was at the office, she would seat herself before the window and think of that evening party of former times. Of that ball where she was so beautiful and so flattered, but often times when her husband was busy at work, she would sit at the window. She would think of that ball dance party where she enjoyed a lot. Okay, that dance, how she was attracted. Uh, uh sorry, how she was. You can say, uh, she attracted everyone. That how she was liked by everyone, and that party, the enjoyment, the fun she had during that time. Okay. So, how would it have been if she had not lost the necklace? Who knows? How singular is life? How full of changes and how small a thing will run or save one? So ultimately, what happened that? 
then she thought that how difficult the life is now life has changed how single the life is that at one time you can live only one part of life and ultimately how these changes they take place and how things they turn over right it means so, that you, yaar, just, kar rahe? you can say purchasing of that you can say borrowing of necklace only that has ultimately changed her and it is just because of that what has happened that her life has entirely changed okay they were indebted they were borrowing things they were saving money every so of money okay and ultimately life has changed from beautiful delicate woman she has changed to a hard crude woman and this is all her change of her life right so next we will see that what will happen at the end of the story okay so this we will continue tomorrow